everyone. Thanks for joining in. I'm Disha Agarwal and I work as a product manager with Microsoft. I work with the Azure Cognitive Services team, more specifically the language vertical of Azure Cognitive Services. My team builds NLP capabilities which are then used to power multiple business scenarios for enterprises. Through the course of this presentation, I'll be introducing some of those capabilities with focus on question answering and language understanding. Language service essentially includes four key capabilities, question answering, language understanding, text analytics, and translator. Question answering helps you build a conversational layer over your data and hence power multiple conversational AI applications. Language understanding helps split up the incoming query into intents and entities, which again finds multiple use cases across apps, bots, and IoT devices. Text analytics has multiple capabilities such as sentiment detection, language detection, key phrase detection. This is again used to power multiple scenarios across the health vertical, across open and mining, and various other applications. Translator helps detect the language of the incoming query and also translate the incoming query into 90 plus supported languages. Question answering helps you build a conversational layer over your data. You begin with creating a knowledge base to which you can add documents from various sources such as fact pages, support websites, manuals, etc. The user is given an easy to use user interface for managing the content. The users can also add personality to the knowledge bases, which is essentially a pre curated list of QAs such as um, professional, humorous, etc. Once the knowledge base is created, the user can quickly add it to a bot application. And when a user query is received by the knowledge base, the answer is searched for across the entire knowledge base and we leverage state-of-the-art transformer-based models in the ranking process. We currently support 50 plus languages. We also help the knowledge base owner continuously improve the knowledge base by incorporating real-world feedback. For instance, let's say for a user query, we have multiple competing Q&As in the knowledge base and the system is not able to disambiguate between the two. In such a scenario, we list the competing Q&As as options to the end user and based on the user's selection, we create a suggestion for the knowledge base owner. For instance, let's say the user typed the query export and the knowledge base had two competing Q&As, migrate knowledge base, I can't export my knowledge base as options to the user query. So we listed out both of them to the end user and the user ended up selecting, I can't export my knowledge base. In such a scenario, we uh, take the user query export and display it as an alternate question suggestion to the original question can't export KB. And this is how the knowledge base owners can continuously improve the knowledge bases. Now I would like to show you a quick demo of the question answering product. I'll also be talking about certain key features such as creating a multi term conversation, powering short answers and support for unstructured documents. So we begin with creating a knowledge base and I'll be indexing two kinds of documents when creating the knowledge base, a semi-structured document and an unstructured document. So the first step to creating a knowledge base is to create a Q&A service. For the purpose of this demonstration, I've already created a Q&A service in advance. However, the process to create a Q&A service is fairly straightforward. You visit the Azure portal and follow the guidelines to create the service. So I'll skip to step two and here I'm supposed to select the subscription and the service that I created in step one. In my case, that is uh, MSFT non product subscription and the name of the service is Custom Question Answering Service. After having selected the subscription and service, I'll be asked to select the language and I'm going to select English here. In step 3, I'm supposed to name the knowledge base, which and I'm naming it as demo underscore DPS. You can choose to name it uh, as you choose fit. And step 4, we're supposed to populate the KB. So here we're supposed to add data to the knowledge base. It could be a structured file like an Excel or something like that. It could be a, a semi-structured document which has a certain hierarchy to it. It could be an unstructured document. It could be a URL. It could be a file, etc. And we can choose to add a multi-turn conversation or not, right? So first, I'll be adding a semi-structured document and enable multi-turn extraction. And after having created the knowledge base, I'll be adding another document which is an unstructured document. So let me first show you the semi-structured document that I'll be adding to the knowledge base. So this is essentially a surface book user guide, right? And as you can see here, the table of contents essentially outline the structure of the document. So here, as you can see, the basics is a topic and it has certain subtopics such as power and charging, power states, touch keyboard, pen and mouse. And each of these subtopics again have their own subtopics. So if I were to quickly look at how this topic is uh, structured in the document. I'm just going to type the basics and look for it in the document. 
as you can see it is a larger topic which are certain topics such as power and charging power states and touch keyboard pen and mouse and each of these subtopics have their own subtopics so there is a hierarchy to this document and we preserve this by creating a multi-turn conversation so let's first do that so i'll enable multi-turn extraction i'll select answer default you can choose to ignore this for now and i'll add the file and here i'm going to add the surface book user guide i also have the option to select your chat which is which is essentially a pre-curated list of q a's in a particular uh, context which could be professional friendly etc for the purpose of this demonstration i'll be not selecting any chat and after you have uploaded the document you can click on create your knowledge base so this will take a couple of minutes and while this is getting extracted, I would like to show you the second document that I'll be adding to the knowledge base, which is an unstructured document and what I mean by it. So the unstructured document, as you can see, is a blog on Surface Laptop 4 and new accessories. So this document doesn't surely have any hierarchy or a table of contents. It's just paragraphs after paragraphs. As you can see, we have a bunch of images. It is information on Surface Laptop 4. It is information on Surface Headphones 2. And that's how the entire document goes. So this is an example of a classic unstructured document. So we'll be adding this document after having tested for semi-structured document that we just added. So let's go on and see how the previous document was treated by QA Maker Portal. So as you can see, 156 QA pairs were extracted out of the original document, semi-structured document, and the table of contents has been preserved in a tree-like topic subtropic structure. So let's quickly search for the particular topics that we had looked for in the previous document. So if I type the basics and look for that answer in the knowledge base, I'll see that the question is created, the basics, and there is an associated answer to the basics question. And we have certain subtopics such as power and charging, power states, touch keyboard, pen and mouse. Now if I were to look for one of these subtopics such as power and charging, I'll again see an answer associated with power and charging with two more subtopics, check the battery level, making a battery last. And now each of these subtopics are also linked to an answer. So this is how the hierarchy was read and extracted in the form of topics and subtopics by our system. So we can quickly test it and see how this will turn out for the end user. And the user doesn't necessarily have to type the exact question. They can type a variation of the question. So let's say the user has typed something like, can you tell me about the basics? So here you can see that the answer passage has been returned, which is the corresponding answer. And we have the three subtopics that we saw initially. You can ignore the short answer as of now. I'll talk about it a little later. But as you can see, the subtopics are there. And now I'm going to select one of these subtopics, power and charging. When I do so, the answer associated with power and charging is presented along with its two own subtopics. And I click one of those subtopics. The answer associated with that is also returned to the end user. So this is what we mean by creating a multi-turn conversation. You can essentially guide the user through the journey of actually querying the chatbot because uh, the users might not always know the right questions to ask, right? So this is essentially helpful to create a conversational scenario for the user. Now let's go on and add the second document that we saw, which was the blog on Surface Laptop Phone and Accessories. So we move on to the settings page and add the new file. When adding the new file, we're supposed to mark unstructured and click on save and trade. So what happened, there is a difference in the way the system treats the semi-structured document that we saw and the unstructured document that we are now extracting. With semi-structured document, we saw that multiple Q&A pairs were extracted and saved in the knowledge base. However, with unstructured content, which truly really don't have a hierarchy, what happens is the entire text is extracted and put into the knowledge base. So essentially no new Q&A pairs are extracted, but the document in its entirety is added to the knowledge base. So if I go back to the edit page, I wouldn't see any increase in the number of Q&A pairs. We had 156 Q&A pairs and we still do have 156 Q&A pairs. However, we see that one unstructured data set was added to the knowledge base. Now when a user query associated with that document comes to the service, the service searches across the document and returns appropriate response. So let's quickly test for it. If we go back to the document, we see that there was a paragraph around Surface Headphones 2 and there were certain details such as hours of music supported by Surface Headphones 2, the price of Surface Headphone, Headphone 2 which is $299. So we'll ask some of these queries and see how the system responds to them. So let's say I type what is the price of Surface Headphones 
So here you can see the answer passive which actually had the answer has been returned by the service and we also see a short answer. So I'll now take a moment to explain short answers here. So there are certain user queries which could have a specific answer. They might not have a large answer passage that the user needs returned, right? So for those specific scenarios, the content authors can choose to opt in for short answers, in which case they can return the short answer along with the large answer, or they can just choose to return the short answer. This actually improves customer experience and also helps the content authors to reduce their effort in actually hand curating these short answers. And we, we announced this in preview recently and this will be going J quite shortly. Similarly, let me try another question, which was, let's say, how many hours of music supported by Surface headphones? And if I look for that, yes, I see the exact passage that has that answer. That is 18.5 hours of music. And I also see the short answer is 18.5 hours. So the system is able to search across a document and turn the relevant answers. Once you've created the knowledge base, we can save and train it, we can publish it. And after having published the knowledge base, we can create a bot application on Azure portal and link that bot application to our Kyanimika knowledge base. And this is how we can essentially create the bot end to end in less than 10 minutes. The language understanding cognitive service can be used to build custom intelligent models using utterances to identify intents and entities. Take for example the following utterance, find me a wireless mouse at $30. This utterance can be used to label intent such as find item as well as there are two entities in this utterance that is item type wireless mouse and money that is $30. So now when a similar user query that is similar to this utterance is received by the model, it's able to interpret it and break it down to intents and entities which can be further processed to generate a response or perform an action. Now I would like to give a quick demo of the language understanding product. On the lewis.ai portal we can easily create a new lewis application by clicking on plus new app and specifying the name and language of the application. For the purpose of this demonstration however I'm going to be using an existing application called pizza and as the name suggests, this application has been trained to address user queries around ordering a new pizza or modifying a pizza order, or just essentially greeting the user who's trying to make a pizza order, right? So let's visit the application and see the kind of assets that have been used to train this application. Here, as you can see under app assets, we have intents and entities. And as we have discussed, a user query is split into intents and entities to identify the action that the user is trying to perform. And uh, this is then used to then process the user query further, right? So let's look at the intents. We see that the various intents that have been used for this application, such as cancel order, confirmation, greetings, and modify order. We'll, uh, we'll go and try to look at one of these uh, intents, modify order, and see how this is being trained by us, right? Training an intent is fairly straightforward. You essentially add an utterance uh, as an example right here, and then click on enter, and you can also split it out and identify entities in that utterance. And that's how you label an intent. So you can we can we can look at some of the existing examples here, right? So modify order has various kinds of examples, ranging from fairly simple to fairly advanced. So if you look at the simple example, it's called order a small pizza. It's clear that the intent is order, and a small pizza has been identified as an entity called full pizza with modifiers, right? And this full pizza with modifiers has various sub entities entities such as size which is identified small as a value and pizza type which is identified pizza as a value right so this way you we can also create various complex and hierarchical entities which have sub entities and those sub entities could also have sub entities and in this way we can address and understand highly complex user queries and not just the very basic ones right so let's look at a couple of other examples for instance Order a thin crust pepperoni pizza with Italian sausage, right? So here again, order is the intent. And a thin crust pepperoni pizza with Italian sausage is a full pizza with modifiers. And here we have a bunch of sub-entities, right? We have crust, which is thin crust. We have pizza type, which is pepperoni pizza. We have topping modifier, which is with Italian sausage. And here Italian sausage is actually the topping, right? Similarly, we can look at yet another complex example where we have combined essentially two pizza orders. So order four cheese pizza with extra cheese and a chicken pizza without chicken and with extra mushroom on top. So here we have two full pizza with modifiers. One is a cheese pizza and one is a chicken pizza and each of these pizza orders have more 
some entities such as uh, topping, such as size, etc. Right. So this way we can essentially train the intent with various examples. Right. We can also add a one uh, or add one more example and I'll show you how to do that. Let's say order a small margarita pizza. Right. And here. That's how it gets added, and I submitted the utterance, and that's how it's got gotten added. And as you can see, they've already sort of suggested entities. Full pizza with modifiers is this entire thing a small margarita pizza. Size has been identified as small, and pizza type is margarita pizza, right? And this is how we can essentially add more examples, more sophisticated examples to the particular intent, right? So now let me quickly see how we can uh, further train and test it, right? So I'm going to click on test here and test my intent that is modify order. To test the intents, I'm going to type a test utterance. So let's start with the basic test utterance such as order a cheese first pizza. So here we only have uh, we have a large mod, uh, full pizza with modifiers and like a pizza type. So let's see how this works out, right? So in this case, if you inspect, we'd see that uh, we have an order called a cheese burst pizza and on expanding it we have one full pizza with modifiers which is a cheese burst pizza and on further expanding it we have pizza type cheese burst pizza. So this is what we'd expected. Now let's say we have uh, we put some information around crust. So let's say we say order a thin crust pepperoni pizza. Right, so we have two pieces of information here. We have the kind of pizza as well as the crust type. So let's see how our system essentially splits it up. So we have an order called a thin crust pepperoni pizza, full pizza with modifiers is thin crust pepperoni pizza, and we have essentially crust type thin crust and pizza type pepperoni pizza. So this is what we expected, right? Let's say now we add a pizza which has a, a crust, a size, and toppings. We'll see how our system understands that query. Order a large thin crust pizza with extra cheese so if we inspect this we'll see that order is a large thin crust pizza with extra cheese a full pizza with modifiers also large thin crust pizza with extra cheese and we are, here we have four sub entities one is size that's large crust that's thin crust pizza type is pizza and topping modifies with extra cheese with topping cheese right so this is fairly expected now let's make it more complex by adding two pizza examples so let's say we add order a large uh, pizza with olives and a small thin crust pizza with cheese Right. So let's see how our system understands this query. So our order is a large pizza with olives and a small thin crust pizza with cheese. And it has essentially split it up into two pizza orders, right? Which was expected full pizza with modifiers, a large pizza with olives, and the second full pizza with modifiers as a small thin crust pizza with cheese. If I expand the first order, I'll see sub entities such as size large, pizza type pizza, and topping olives, right? As expected. And the second order if I expand I'll have size small crust thin crust pizza type pizza and topping as cheese so this is essentially how on training the modify order intent with various sort of examples we have made the system capable to actually understand really complex user queries around ordering pizza chaining pizza and multiple pizza orders and once these intents and entities have been split up we can essentially do anything with them we can make an API call to kind of process that uh, process that order or we can return a response to the user query based on their in inputs etc and this is essentially how the service can be trained to build conversational AI interfaces and uh, applications. Many of our customers use question answering and language understanding together to build conversational AI applications. Take for example a customer in the travel industry who wants to build a chatbot to improve customer experience. So let's say the customers have a specific question around carry-on baggage policy or what are the items that can be carried in the baggage etc. So such questions can and should be addressed by the question answering product and the appropriate response should be returned to the user. However, let's say the customer has a specific 
action that they want to perform. For instance, let's say they want to book a flight from Chicago to London at a particular time. So such a query should be processed by language understanding so that you can understand the intent as well as entities and accordingly process the query. So in this way, both of these products can be used together to build sophisticated bots. One of our customers, Telefonica, is using cognitive services such as language understanding and question answering to build a digital assistant for their customers. The aim is to improve customer experience and also increase customer engagement. For instance, the customers can ask the chatbot what to watch and the bot will suggest certain shows to the customer. Similarly, one of our other customers, Accenture, has actually built an internal employee assistant bot called Deepa to serve the employees from hire to retire. So the bot answers common user queries around HR policies, vacation, notices, etc. and also engages the employees day to day. To learn more about the language services, we recommend that you go through the documentation and case studies published for each of these services. Thank you for joining in. Thank you.